What gods did the Celts believe in? What stories did they tell themselves? Today I want to focus on Celtic and Irish mythology. Hi and welcome to Celtic History Decoded, I'm Stephen. To begin with, I want to focus on a topic that anyone familiar with Irish mythology will know well, the Tour de Danon. The Tour de Danon, meaning people of the goddess Danu, is common in Irish and Celtic mythology. Danu was the mother goddess of the Tour de Danon. The Tour de Danon were a supernatural race that dwelt in the other world, but they could interact with humans and the human world. The first king of the Tour de Danon was Nueda, who lost his hand or arm in battle, and thus lost his right to govern and to kingship. He was later provided with a silver, almost bionic arm to replace this, and then years later he was provided with a fully functioning hand or arm. There is a story of jealousy in this tale. Nueda was initially fixed with his silver hand or arm by the physician of the Tour de Danon. Years later, the son of the physician managed to find a way through using magic and other such things to provide Nueda with a fully functioning human hand or arm. Different accounts say arm or hand. When the physician found out this though, he murdered his son in an act of jealousy. This is just one small caveat detail of the tales of the Tour de Danon. The enemies of the Tour de Danon were the Fomorians, often depicted as being monstrous, destructive and a chaotic force that dwelt under the earth or under the sea. The Tour de Danon would go on to defeat the Fomorians in battle. In later folklore, the Tour de Danon are often described as fairies, something I want to address more in a future video. From my understanding in general, the Tour de Danon are considered the fifth tribe or, or people of Ireland, and then they were replaced by the Milesians. When the Milesians or the Milesians replaced the Tour de Danon, the Tour de Danon were forced to retreat to places like this, forests and other isolated parts of, of the human realm. One of the main gods of the Tour de Danon is the Dagda, meaning good god, who is often portrayed as a father figure, a king and a druid. The Dagda is often associated with agriculture, fertility, strength and magic, and he was known to have a magic staff or club, with one end given the power of death and the other the power of life. So he could kill a man or a being with one end and heal them with the other. The Dagda is considered by some to be a modern version of an ancient Celtic and Gallo-Roman god called Cicalus, who was often depicted in carrying a mallet in one hand and a ola or jar for cooking in the other. The Morrigan is another important Celtic deity, often referred to as the Great or Phantom Queen or sometimes as the Queen of the Demons. Associated with war and fate, the Morrigan is often depicted as being a crow, and is often referred to as being a trio of sisters. On the night of the Gaelic festival of Samhain, a festival that is a precursor to Halloween in many respects, a fire festival that marked the end of summer and the beginning of the dark part of the year, the Dagda and the Morrigan would come together, and that would signify the health and prosperity of the tribe and the fertility of the crops and animals in the year to come. Another important Celtic deity was Lu, often depicted as being a warrior king, a master craftsman and a saviour. One of Lu's sons was Cucullin, a warrior hero and demigod in Irish mythology. Lu is thought to be a modern interpretation of the ancient Lugos, who is often depicted as having three heads. There is many references to this god today, including the city of Lyon in France, which is apparently named after Lu. Bridget is another important Celtic deity. She is associated with poetry, blacksmithing, healing and various other things. Bridget is the daughter of the Dagda, and she is often referred to as being three separate entities. The phenomenon of describing Celtic deities in three parts, like a, almost like a trinity, is a fascinating feature of Celtic mythology. 
Come with argues that it was essentially a way to add potency and value to what they were saying or importance to what they were saying and what they stood for. But I'm going to delve a wee bit more into other theories as to why these people or gods or deities are often described as having three forms. If you have any input on that, please let me know in the comments below. The religion of the ancient Celts is often described as being Celtic polytheism, meaning they worship numerous gods. In fact, there is reference to over 300 Celtic deities, although they may be the names or there may be names for the same deity. Three important and often cited ancient Celtic gods was Taranus, meaning god of thunder, as the word Taranus probably comes from the Celtic Taran, although I'm not sure if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Another important god was Tetatus, meaning god of the tribe. And the third was Esos, Ogmios was another important Celtic god in ancient times, known as the god of eloquence, and there are tales of men having their ears nailed to his tongue, given his powers of eloquence and persuasion. In Julius Caesar's conquest of Gaul, he writes that the Gauls were extremely superstitious, and that they sometimes performed human sacrifices. The sacrifices were performed by the Druids. Julius Caesar also writes that the Gauls believed that they were descendants of Dispater, the Roman god of the underworld, and that the Gauls also revered gods such as Apollo, Mars, Jupiter, and Minerva. It's hard to say how accurate Julius Caesar's interpretation of the Gauls was, but there may be some credence to some of it. It does seem that he oversimplified a lot of it though, for a Roman audience, as Julius Caesar's conquests or uh, commentaries on Gaul was meant to be propaganda for a Roman audience. Julius Caesar's interpretation of the Gaulish Apollo was probably Maponus, a Celtic god similar to Apollo. This is just a very quick introduction to Irish and Celtic mythology. It's a massive subject, too much for one video. So please let me know what area interests you the most. I'm planning on producing more videos on Celtic and Irish and Scottish mythology going forward. And I'd be interested to know what area you find the most interesting. Thanks for watching. I'm making more videos that will be out soon. In closing though, I want to leave you with a question. Where does history begin and mythology end? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications. You can also support this work through buymeacoffee.com and Patreon. All the links are in the description below.